What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, it is a good, good day. Uh, we're going to talk about this Swamp Fox Arrowhead 1 to 8 by 24 low power variable optic, which is also available in a 1 to 6 and in a 1 to 10. I just went for the in between 1 to 8. Uh, right off the bat, there's a ton of value here. Uh, I think if this optic cost significantly more, it would still be a good deal. Value, 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 which I am all about. So the plan for the video, of course, we're going to talk about the different features of this optic. I did a ton of testing, ton of testing on this optic to go over with you guys. Then we're going to talk about the pros, the cons, and then what I think of it overall. No sponsor of today's video, so we're going to get right into it. Thank you for watching, thank you for commenting, subscribing, liking the video, all those things. Just thank you, thank you, thank you for every single time you guys do that. All right, this is a second focal plane optic, and that's one of the reasons it's less expensive. Typically, second focal plane optics are less expensive. The drawback to that is the bullet drop compensator in the reticle, which I will explain in a minute, only works at max magnification. So if you are at one to seven, that bullet drop compensator is not gonna work unless you are all the way up. For what I'm using this optic for, it's fine, that does not bother me at all. Uh, let's start in the back here. Uh, like most low power variable optics, there is a diopter. What a diopter does, it's kind of like a focus ring for your eyes, or I say, it's like kind of like a pair of glasses, so to speak, where you can adjust the diopter back and forth and uh, have the reticle be focused and crisp and clear for your eyes. Now this diopter, again, is a very, very generous one compared to some of the other ones I've seen. There's a, a wide range of adjustments to uh, customize it for your eyesight. So two of the more important features on a low power variable optic is gonna be the eye relief and the eye box. The eye relief is how close you need to get to the optic so you can see through it clearly without any shadows around. This one is rated at three and a half inches, which again is, I think is very good for an, uh, a one to eight optic in this price range. And they say three and a half inches and I find that uh, pretty accurate. One of the reasons I went with the one to eight instead of the one to 10 is, I usually don't shoot out past 300 yards and I don't think I need a 1 to 10 for that. Plus the higher you go in magnification, you do lose some of that eye relief and some of the eye box. The eye box, instead of being uh, closer to the optic, it's more left, right, up or down to make sure it's squared. Uh, and I'm going to say again, it's very, very good for an optic of this month, for uh, optic of this price. It's not a $3,000 optic, it's a $500 or so optic and the eye box and eye relief is excellent for a one to eight optic in this price. And I did a lot of shooting and moving in different positions and transitions and stuff like that. And uh, I never really had a problem picking up that, um, that reticle, whether it's on one time or even on eight time. Eight time is always a little bit more challenging, but I won't call it difficult at all. Uh, the magnification ring is fine. It's very, very smooth. I always think that all magnification rings are more stiff than they should be. And most people think I'm crazy, but it's smooth and there's no problem with it. The one thing I really do like is they include this speed lever, speed knob, whatever you call it, I don't care. Um, I like it because it's not like a piece of plastic that goes on around that's gonna come off and move. It's actually a metal speed knob that screws right into the magnification ring and it is solid. They did a really, really good job with it. Um, it just makes it very, very easy to uh, adjust the magnification if you're trying to do it very, very quickly. The other thing I like about it is besides it screwing in in four different locations here, there's actually three different spots where you can screw in that speed knob into the optic. So if you have like a set of offset iron sights or an offset red dot or whatever your kit is set up and you don't want that speed knob to block it or to work well, you can put it in different locations for however you have your rifle set up. I thought that they're not the first ones to do it, but um, I just thought that was a very, very nice touch. All right, the other really important part of low power variable optics is going to be the reticle. You could have the nicest optic in the world, and if you don't vibe and you can't figure out the reticle, it's not going to work. So these are available in three different options. Uh, there's a BDC reticle, which is the one I went with. There's an MOA, and there's a MIL, M-I-L reticle. My mind, my brain, when I looked at them, the BDC was the most simple. And again, I'm not really gonna be shooting out past 300 yards. So uh, one day is overkill to begin with. Uh, they're both available in either a red or a green optic, whatever your eyesight prefers, whatever you pick up better, you can do either one. As far as the brightness, 
I don't think it's quite daylight bright. I think it's really, really, really close. Something similar to the uh, Vortex uh, Strike Eagle or the Primary Arms SLX series, any of those budget friendly optics that are just so close to being daylight bright but not quite. Now that doesn't really bother me because uh, I only use the brightness if it's low light, if I need to. Uh, all of the uh, um, reticles are etched and the black is fine during daylight. I don't need to turn it on for red, so I personally don't care, but it, on a very, very bright sunny day, it's not quite daylight bright. Um, the bullet drop compensator in this particular one will work with 5.56, and it'll also work with 308 as well. So looking close up at the reticle, the center dot is gonna be your uh, hold point for a 50 yard zero out to 250 yards. The set of bars, uh, the three lines right below it, not only is that your, your bullet drop compensator for 300 and then 400 and then 500 yards, it's also a shoulder hold so you can range how far somebody is. It's, a, it's never an exact science, but it's roughly, if someone's shoulder width goes from bar to bar, that's roughly the distance how far they are away from you. So the top line, that's 300 yards, your 300 line holdover. If the bar goes from shoulder to shoulder on somebody, they are roughly 300 yards away. And the same thing, one below it's 400, the one below that is 500. Uh, below that you see three chevrons. Those are gonna be your holdovers for 600 yards, for 700 yards, and for 800 yards. Uh, the nice thing about that is, is the chevron has a much finer point, a finer tip to it. So it allows you to get uh, a much more precise shot on a much further distance. Switching over to 308 or 762, there are different holdovers for that round. If you are using this optic on one of those calibers, there's different holdovers for it, but I won't bore you with the details. Another nice thing the optic has in the center of it, it has some rapid ranging reticle is what uh, Swamp Fox calls it. So in the inside of the circle, in these three, the three lines that are in there, if something lines up in all three of those lines, you're gonna know it's roughly a 12 inch diameter at 100 yards if it lines up in the center. And again, those shoulder ranging bars, they call it. Um, Next to it, I already went over that, but there's a description and what it looks like. Overall, I think the reticle is very, very simple, but also very, very useful. It took me like 30 seconds. I figured out all the different holdovers, all the different ranging features, and I was good to go. And that's why I went with that one, just because it was simple and useful, and I am simple. <laughs> Let's move uh, windage and elevation turrets. So they are locked turrets. They're not going to spin at all. They are not capped. You just simply pull out the turret and then you can make your adjustments up, down, left, right, however you need to. They are very tactile and they are very audible. Here I'll let you try to listen. Don't know if my camera is going to pick that up. I probably should have figured that out before the review. All right, the mill reticle is 0.1 mil adjustment per click. The MOA reticle is half MOA adjustment per click, and you have a total of 100 MOA adjustment clicky points. Uh, you can also reset the turrets back to zero if you want to. Once you make your adjustments and dial your scope in for your rifle, uh, you can simply use a screwdriver or a coin to reset the uh, turret back to zero. Next to the windage and elevation, of course, we have our brightness adjustment. As far as the battery, it takes a CR2032, which is great because those batteries are very easy to get. It has 12 brightness adjustments, the bottom two being night vision compatible. I did look through this optic with a set of nods that I'm reviewing right now, and it's okay. It's decent. It's not ideal, but it, it will do if you need to use it as a backup. The one thing I really like about the brightness adjustments is in between each setting, you have an off setting. So it goes level one off, level two off, level three off, and all the way around to 12. And I love that if you're move from one area to another and you want to turn it on, you don't need to go off all the way to whatever setting you need. It's much faster and much easier if you're going indoors to outdoors or an area that's dark and light or whatever the scenario may be. Uh, the tube size is going to be a 30 millimeter tube, which is great because it's very, very common and finding scope rings and mounts and all that stuff is going to be very, very easy. My son is sneaking in the room. You wanna be in the video? This is me, right? You're in a video, yeah, this is, I'm doing a video right now. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. He needed to ask me if he could buy hot lunch tomorrow or if he had to take a lunch from home. All right, glass clarity is what I was about to talk 
about. And again, I looked through the glass for the first time and I said, oh, that's that's pretty good. And then I remembered again, it's a one to eight optic for $500-ish in that area. And I was like, wow, that uh, <laughs> glass is really good for that price. So as you see here, it's pretty crisp. It's clear. I don't really see much distortion around the edges at all. It's just, it's pretty pretty good i really can't complain a uh, field of view also is very respectable again for an optic really an optic in any price but definitely in this price range at uh, one times power at one power your field of view is 122 yards if you crank that up to eight times it goes down to 14 yards and if you compare the specs on that to some more expensive optics that's pretty darn good uh, the one thing i didn't do in the beginning of the video is my disclosure let me just knock that out of the way real quick don't really have any connection to Swamp Fox. Do know some people there, uh, but I paid for this optic. This was not sent to the channel for free. I paid for it with my hard-earned money, and it lives on my rifle now that I do most of the testing uh, other rifle accessories on. Um, but there will be some affiliate links down in the video description. If you're looking to pick one up, please hook me up. Use that affiliate link. Hopefully, I can find you a good deal, and uh, it definitely helps to keep the channel going strong what next okay let's talk about the length the weight in the msrp which i mentioned a few times and then the best part for me of every review is let's talk about the testing that i have done on this optic this has been on my beater testing rifle for months probably four or five months it's been on there i shot several hundred rounds probably four or five hundred rounds of 556 five, and i probably show i shot at this point close to 1000 rounds of 22 lr i recently got this 22 lr conversion kit it's made by cmmg my friends at midwest gunworks sent it to the channel for free for me to review and on my rifle with this sound mitigation device from whip machine uh, a 16 inch barrel the sound mitigation device the 22 it's like hearing safe it's so much fun it's just a blast and i chewed up all of my 22 lr ammo uh, anyway first thing i do with any sight obviously i sight it in I, I get it sighted in and make sure it's good to go and my shots are hit hitting where i want them to do after that i typically do some one-up drills just to get used to the eye relief the eye box the reticle all that good stuff and just trying to get a little bit more careful with them after that i started doing transitions uh, not only from one target to the next but also a couple shots on a close target and then a few shots on a further target uh, which is obviously an advantage of an L LPVO is how you can and my eyes are terrible I say it all the time and I mean that they're terrible You can very quickly adjust the magnification from one to something a little higher and make that getting that hit a little bit easier Especially if you're like me and you can't see past the end of your nose uh, I did lots of plinking especially with the 22 once I put the 22 conversion kit in there, man I shot so so much steel with it uh, lots of transitionings from target to target back and forth um, I did that so so much just because it was so much fun I let several buddies of mine shoot the rifle as well both in 556 and in the 22 LR conversion and uh, they all were impressed and they all were very very surprised at how affordable the optic was for the price that it came in at Next, I brought it to my secondary range. My secondary range has a ton of steel. And again, with that 22 LR bolt, I tore up the plate racks and the steel and dueling trees. And man, I just, I went to town. That range also is the longest shooting range in Rhode Island. And don't laugh, our longest shooting range here in Rhode Island is 300 yards. That is it. That's all we get here in Rhode Island. So I stretched it out as far as I possibly could. And a one to eight optic at 300 yards it was very very easy to get those hits i started off uh, bench resting it at 100 200 yards uh with the 22 and with the 556 and then when i went past 200 yards i put the 22 lr away and i just uh i went with the 556 to get some good hits at 300 yards i also shot this optic indoors several times uh, every week i take a class called shooters fitness it's more about fitness than shooting but it's a little bit of both and uh shooting when you're out of breath and being able to manipulate the gun and doing all those things when you're tired and winded and your adrenaline's pumping and so I shot it indoors a bunch again, both 22 and 5.56. And uh, so indoors, outdoors, with the reticle on, with the reticle off, 
the last way I tested it is every ring, every week when I go to the range, I go to the range pretty much every Saturday morning and I set up like a mock tactical games event. So if you don't know, tactical games is kind of like CrossFit with guns. You're doing a lot of exercising and sled drags and lifting and it's always different. You don't know exactly what you're getting into. But the good thing about um, testing products is you're slinging your rifle on the back you're throwing it on the ground you're you know you're doing burpees you're doing not usually with the rifle on you but you're doing different exercises kettlebells lifting running all sorts of stuff so when you're testing rifle accessories and pistol accessories they're really taking a beating you know they're getting like i said thrown on the ground thrown in a barrel slung on your back bouncing all around and uh being i had this on my rifle for four or five months now um, it probably went through, man, 12 to 20 different uh, Saturdays of being beat up, thrown around, smashed, and it, it took a good licking and it kept on ticking. That is definitely a lot of testing over the past four or five months. So based on that information, the biggest pro for me, no surprise, I've said it five times, is going to be the value in what you get for the price. I know 500 bucks isn't like a super cheap Bushnell optic, but what you get for the money, a ton, a ton of value. The glass is very, very clear. The magnification ring, especially with the speed lever, they did a very, very good job with that. It has a solid eye box. Um, uh, slash uh, eye relief, excuse me. I think the field of uh, field of view is very, very good, especially for an optic this price. The turrets and how they are locking turrets, the brightness adjustment with that offsetting in between. Man, there's a lot of really, really good things that Swamp Fox did with this optic. As far as cons, I really only have one con. When you illuminate the reticle, the entire reticle illuminates. And I think a lot of people like that. I personally would prefer only to have the dot in the middle light up or maybe the dot with the ring around it those would be the only two things i prefer so did it uh, affect me or slow me down in any way absolutely not no big deal like i said i don't usually use the illumination anyway sometimes when we we're shooting uh, low light indoors then obviously i was tough to see the etch reticle especially with my terrible eyes so i would turn the illumination on then but if i was outside uh, or if it was a well-lit area, I'm not turning the illumination on anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. Overall, I think they make a uh, very, very, again, high, uh, high value optic. If you're not looking to spend like three grand on a Vortex Razor or more on like a Night Force or something, um, whether you want a first focal plane or a second focal plane, they make both. They have different magnification options. Of course, they have a full line of optics, not just this one. But again, the value is there. Uh, the quality for the money is there. So Swamp Fox should probably be on the list if you are looking to get uh, a, an optic. Either if you're not, if you're not, if you're looking not to spend a million dollars, or maybe like a secondary optic. Swamp Fox should definitely be on your list. All right, before you guys go, let me quickly remind you of the affiliate links. If you're looking to pick one of these up, hopefully I can find you a good deal. And again, it really helps the channel grow. So uh, consider using those affiliate links. I need to thank myself for buying myself a new optic. So thank you, Ty Berius. Man, those dad jokes are really bad. Uh, no sponsor of today's video, but these are the four companies who do support me with affiliate links. The discount code or the link is down in the video description. And we also thank my Patreon supporters. They supply a lot of the ammo to the channel, which is great because ammo is very, very expensive right now. Still, the link to the Patreon is also down in the video description. I am on three social media platforms. If you want to know what reviews I'm working on right now before they come out on YouTube, consider following me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and on Parler. Once again, the links are down in the video description. More important than anything at anything else let me thank you ladies and gentlemen for watching it is truly truly appreciate every time you like a video comment subscribe enable the bell notification share a video anytime you guys do any of that all jokes aside it truly helps me out and i definitely definitely appreciate it i will see you guys next time peace